Hi, welcome to the second JavaFX on Gryphon screencast. In the first screencast, I talked about how to create a JavaFX application with Gryphon and how to create a custom MVC group. In this screencast, we're going to talk a little bit about events and binding. So this is where we left off. We had our default JavaFX display here from the application that the archetype set up for us, and we had just added a custom MVC group called Cool and displayed a message from the group right below our existing JavaFX text. So let's actually add a control to our custom MVC group. Let's see how that's done. I will quit that application, go back to our cool view, and since we're going to be adding more nodes, I will get rid of the stack pane and change it to a VBox so that the controls will be stacked one right on top of the other. Uh, we'll use a spacing of 10 again, just like we did in our main group, and we will give it an alignment of center. Now the alignment property of a VBox is actually uh, of type pause. It expects, uh, expects a, a value from that enumeration. And so what, what we're doing here is equivalent of saying pause.center. But one of the nice shortcuts GroovyFX provides is that if it notices that you're passing it a string where it expects an enumeration, it will transform the string into all caps and check to see if that string represents a member of the enumeration. If so, it'll set it for you. So what it all comes down to is that you can write just center there and save yourself a little bit of time in typing. So let's add a button control as the first member of our VBox. And we will give it a label of cool click. And we will add an action handler so that it passes the click onto our presentation model. And we do that just by saying model, which is an injected property of this class. Um, and we will call it on click. All right, so a couple of things about what GroovyFX is doing for us here as well. When we pass a string as the first parameter to a button, or actually any control that derives from the labeled class in JavaFX. That includes buttons, radio buttons, checkboxes, and of course labels themselves. If you pass a string as the first parameter, it will assume that uh, that string is what you want to display in the control. So if you're like me and you can never remember if it's supposed to be text or label or content or whatever the attribute or whatever the property is supposed to be, uh, you can just pass it a string and be done with it. And it's very helpful. Um, for people like me who can sometimes forget that stuff. And then the other nice thing that GroovyFX is doing for us here is uh, allowing us to set the on action event handler using just a closure. Now normally in Java you would have to create an event handler to handle the action event type and uh, write an anonymous inner class or something for this. But in Groovy you can just say, you know, execute this closure and be done with it. So uh, that should give us a button that then passes the click onto our presentation model. So let's go add a handler for that in our model. Um, this can be either uh, a closure or a regular method. I will go ahead and make it a closure. So on click is what we called it. And I'll define a closure. And what we'll do is every time the button is clicked, we will update the message property. Uh, let's see, we'll make it say cool group click count. And we will increment a click count variable here. So every time the button is clicked, we will update the click count and change the message. And since that message is bound to the text of our group, we should see that message change each time. So I will go ahead whoa, and add a private int for our click count. And we will see what that looks like. All right. So Griffin will compile and run our class for us, or our application for us here. And as soon as it comes up, there we go. We have our button now our cool click button and still have our text node underneath that and then every time we click on it 
we will see that that bound message is automatically updated with our text. So that's cool. Very simple to change things around and have uh, controls that are bound to state in your presentation model. That's exactly what we want. Uh, let's get a little bit more sophisticated though because normally what you want in your presentation model is to be able to affect the state of the controls on, in the view. Um, and usually we want to do a little bit more than just change a message. So let's play around a little bit more with this. Uh, let's say we want to add a bindable string that is the button text. So we can change that based on the state of our presentation model. Let's say we also want a bindable boolean that will disable our button. So we'll call that button disabled. Alrighty. And let's see. Just to provide some initialization here, we will set that to cool click. And we'll set disabled to false so that our button will start enabled. So what's happening here is when you provide an initial value to a property that you've marked as FX bindable, the AST transform will automatically set that initial value on the underlying JavaFX property for you. So it does the right thing. It just it handles it automatically. So let's add some logic to our presentation model here and say if the click count is less than five, say, um, what we want to do is just change our button text to say something like cool. Click again. And if we get to five or more, we'll change our button text to say that's enough. And then we will disable the button. So this is kind of the essence of the presentation model pattern. You want all of your logic to be in the model where it's easily testable. You want your views to be as simple as possible, um, since they are usually a little bit harder to test. And so what we're doing is anything, uh, rather than doing this sort of logic in the view itself, we will let the presentation model handle it and just update properties that are bound to the view. So now that we've got our extra logic in our model, Let's go make our view take advantage of it. So the first thing we're going to want to do in our view is to actually bind our text. We'll need to, to use the actual text property for that. So we'll say bind model dot button text property. Remember, you have to use the property itself if you're going to use binding or add uh, change listeners or whatever. And then we will set the disable property of the button to bind model dot button disabled. All right. So that should disable our button whenever the the state of the button disabled property. Whoops! I almost forgot that button disabled property changes on the model. Now notice that we're we're spilling over past the end of our line here with our on action. So what you can do in Groovy Effects is Close the uh, method call there and give it a closure. And inside that closure, you can put your action handlers um, here instead. So instead of a property, though, you have to make it a method call whose only parameter is a closure that uh, should be called when that, uh, when that event occurs. So this can be handy if you need uh, event handlers that uh, span more than one line. It, it can be a, a little bit nicer than having to put them up here in the button declaration itself. But hopefully, I mean ideally with the presentation model, your handler should be very simple. So we'll just leave ours as a one-liner. And by the way, this works uh, for all events, keyboard and mouse as well, not just the action handler. We have methods defined in GroovyFX to handle on mouse pressed or whatever. You can do them inside a, a 
child closure just as well as you can do them as a property of the node itself. Um, what else should we do here? Let's, oh, here's a good one. Um, let's create another text node. And give it a fill of white. So just as a comparison, if you were going to use uh, JavaFX, JavaFX's native binding, uh, you could do that easily just by uh, putting the code right here in your view. So if we want to do like the T, get the text property of the text, and then bind it to our model message property, uh, we can do that as well. So this shows you that uh, the FX bindable properties are fully compatible with the normal uh, built-in JavaFX properties. The only difference you'll notice is the, the parentheses here. Um, in FX bindable, we actually have created a getter so that in Groovy we can access it as we would any other property without having to make it a method call, save you some typing. The JavaFX team, when they created their properties, didn't make it a standard getter. Uh, they didn't follow the standard getter pattern. And so text property is the actual method call you have to make there. So it's a little bit of an impedance mismatch between the uh, Groovy FX properties and the built-in JavaFX properties. I could certainly wish that the JavaFX team would have followed the standard there and made it a getter, and that would have allowed us to just write it like that. But that's just something to be aware of. So let's save that and give this a run and see if we have all of our binding and events working properly here. Okay, so here is our application, and notice that we have our two text fields here. One of them is using uh, Groovy FX binding, and the other one is just using regular Java FX binding. When we click, we would expect our text on the button to update, which it did to reflect this change in state of the presentation model. And both of our text nodes are bound here, and you can see that they worked well. And so we should be able to click two, three, four, and a fifth time, and whoa, that's enough. Okay, so everything worked great. That's a basic introduction to binding and events. Uh, you, know, you now know how to create controls in your views that can pass events uh, right through to your presentation models and how to bind a state in your view to the state of the presentation model that changes based on the logic it, it contains. So that should give you enough to you know, get going creating your own uh, more sophisticated MVC groups uh, with Griffin and JavaFX. I hope we'll see you back here at the next JavaFX on Griffin Screencast. Until then, happy Groovy coding and happy JavaFX coding.